Okay, right on time. Approximately. Oh. Well, hi everybody. Uh, no, I didn't have a loop running at the moment. That isn't to say I wouldn't instigate one, but uh, I thought I would like to uh, some tribute here now today to uh, Frank Zappa, just because uh, I was on the phone with my friend Coda Clute a little while ago, and uh, he's got a great book out entitled Frank and Co. Uh, he had a very long-lasting and, and deep relationship with Frank Zappa, who, uh, unless you were in the inner circle, he wasn't an easy guy to get to know. Apparently he was very guarded, but he was a fast friend of Coe's and also Coe's dad, uh, who passed away last year, sorry to say. I think his father was the first DJ maybe in uh, Holland to really get behind Frank Zappa's music in the 60s. And Coe has definitely uh, championed it. We did uh, several performances of a piece called I Have a Cat where Co took the last lengthy interview with Captain Beefheart, Don Van Vliet, and uh, did a quite uh, an interesting musical accompaniment with me uh, creating a guitar score in the studio. And uh, well, anyway, I was gonna start off here today with a little bit of uh, Frank Zappa's King Kong for y'all, okay.
people at the Zappanale in Bad Dober on Germany where I've performed oh I think three times at least and they they postponed it this year but I just submitted uh, a version of that track I recorded a couple days ago here uh, so I hope there it will be posted on their website pretty soon if not already and uh, we'll have to wait for next year but that seems to be uh, most of the most of the feedback that I'm getting vis-a-vis -vis live gigs uh, for now uh, there's a whole backlog of people who were promised gigs uh, that had to be postponed at the beginning of the pandemic which seems ancient history but is still ongoing uh, obviously despite what you read in the newspaper rates are low lower more people are getting the vaccines that are out there, and we'll see if this definitely <laughs> puts the needle forward. But pretty much in New York now, everything has reopened somewhat to a degree. I'm supposed to meet an old friend with Caroline tonight at Soho House, which is this kind of exclusive, you have to be a member of a private club for British expats in New York and their friends. And uh, it's a it's an old friend, Sebastian Doggart, who used to write for the Evening Standard. And he's a great guy. This guy got me actually uh, hooked up to play in Cuba originally. I met him in Jeshion, South Korea, at a festival of film and music. And anyway, so we're going to catch up. But all I'm saying is I wonder if it's going to be an indoor dining experience. I've had a couple of them, and they seem to be going off well. So, uh, well, well, we'll just see, but I'll make a report. I'll make a full report. And, and what else is new? Well, let's see, there was a great uh, couple of things, a couple of write-ups that came in publicity-wise for my album, my retrospective of the essential Gary Lucas. I know you're fascinated with hearing about this, just as I am about discussing it, but in any case, uh, I have a great team in France who just delivered nice coverage in French Rolling Stone. Uh, and it was basically a list of some of my favorite guitar tracks. Uh, I, ones I, anyway, I could definitely <laughs> augment this list a hundredfold 
by you know great guitarists, great music that I heard coming up and uh, that I still hear today. But I tried to winnow it down to essentials because that's the name of the album. But uh, it's always hard, these lists are always changing. Uh, I have a mutable outlook on this, so depending on, I don't know, my mood or what I had to eat today, which wasn't much, a bagel. A bagel from the only authentic bagelry in the West Village. Uh, there are many imitators, folks. But if you're, if you're down here, check this one on Christopher Street, right off 7th Avenue. They make them fresh in the back. They're really nice people. Nothing as good as a hot bagel here in New York, except for maybe Saint Viator in Montreal, where they have their own s distinct species of bagels and, and Jewish food throughout that city, uh, particularly in that neighborhood. This is where Leonard Cohen came from, and Mordecai Rickler, and it's a great city, and I, I love to play in Montreal. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's a roundabout way of saying what? Well, uh, I'm happy to be here to play for you on this Tuesday. It feels like Monday, but we had a Memorial Day yesterday here, which was, you know, kind of a, it, 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 I mean, it turned into an okay day, but it was, it was a somber old weekend here. Today the sun is starting to peep out. It's pretty warm. Uh, and, and uh, okay, I'm just starting my week now. But I've been working hard getting all sorts of things prepared for you guys coming up, of which uh, I'll tell you more about as we get further on into it. But, you know, we had this 24th anniversary, a tragic passing of Jeff Buckley recently. And, uh, you know, it still rattles me often thinking about that. But uh, Jeff's spirit definitely lives on in the music and uh, I'd like to play, actually, a piece I meant to, but we ran out of time last time, and uh, just do a little tuning up here. Always a good idea. get this precisely in the in the setup that I had when I composed this piece oh, 
table wrapping. <laughs> Jeff either registering general consternation or the seal of approval for my version right there. Uh, yeah, that was the original template for Mojo Pin. It was an instrumental which I titled And You Will. And uh, Jeff took it and ran with it and uh, came back after I submitted it to him on a cassette having written it here in New York in, I think it was late May, early June, I gotta check, of 91, and uh, he came back in August, early in the month, playing bass in a kind of a uh, show band for the film The Commitments, this Alan, <laughs> this Alan Parker film, The Commitments, uh, they were doing parties around the U.S. to promo the film, and I think they had a member of the, uh, the actual cast also playing in the band, but anyway, Jeff came over on a really hot, humid, muggy August night and said, uh, okay, listen, you know that piece that you called And You Will? Now it's called Mojo Pin. The other one I'd send him was called Rise Up To Be, which he retitled Grace, and uh, we sat and worked out kind of a dry run through of it because he had written lyrics. He had more than enough lyrics in a book that he carried around with him and uh, also sketches and he would record his dreams. It was a dream journal. It was one of these artist notebooks uh, you can get with unlined paper and uh, ideal to, to, to sketch if you like to do that. Now, Don Van Vliet also carried these around in various sizes. So, uh, anyway, uh, I liked what he'd come up with very much. I didn't really understand <laughs> the lyrics, but I just thought, uh, you know, it's like Jeff is the lyricist. I always think that the singer, uh, whoever I work with, should be the lyricist on a 50-50 collaboration, pretty much, because they're gonna better understand and interpret their own lyrics than if it's something that I write or we work out together. I've done it every other way, possibly. But I think the best results have come forward this way, come through. And uh, we went into a little demo studio called Krypton Studios here in the, uh, it was in Soho. It might still be there, though I, I know the guy Murray Kaufman, who ran the studio, is long, long gone out of that space. But uh, we, we went in on a Saturday, uh, just about a week after, uh, after codifying the song, and recorded demos, which came out really well. And maybe I'll post one uh, later on the timeline. But I, I think that uh, some of the best things I ever did musically initiated themselves right here. I did most of the writing in this workspace, and uh, yeah, I, I feel most comfortable here talking to you maybe, but I like the window too. The fact is though, that uh, the heat of the sun now that we're getting into close to summer gets really intense. 
playing up in that space, although the view is nice, even with the window open, that uh, for the time being, I think I'm gonna continue to uh, do these live streams from, from right here in the cockpit, so to speak. So, yeah, that, that, that would be it for now. And I just want to say thank you again for tuning in. Please visit the virtual tip jar at uh, paypal.com. And uh, I hope I see you all back here this Thursday, where I'll have another action packed jamboree specially all set up and like that. Okay, love you guys. Thanks again for tuning in. And uh, see you Thursday. <laughs>